to open my eyes unto the hills. From when coming my help, my help will come from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. For many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will be the hit out of them all. In the storm, in the rain, oceans rise, thunders roll, and you feel all afraid. The road is slippery, way hard. Lift up your eyes and see the sun walking with you. Times away. Open your heart, believe this word. Rise a day. Lift up your eyes and see the sun walking with you through times away. Open your heart, believe this word. Rise a day. One to care, the one who shares the cross you bear, and it's here right the end. Hallelujah! When there's no one to care and no one who shares your burdens, there's somebody who cares for you, and that is our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to Jesus. There's going to be a brighter day. That was Brighter Day by Busai or Me by myself. That's one of my songs. You could get it on YouTube. It's going to be a blessing to your life. God bless you. You're welcome once again this evening to Marital Breakthrough Prayers for Singles and Married, where we normally have a very fantastic time in God's presence. Hallelujah. I missed you. Did you miss me last week? Went here last week for some reasons that were just beyond our control. But we want to appreciate God for giving us the grace to be here today. And today we are going to continue and probably conclude on our series, on the series we currently are, that sex, sanctity, and your sanity. So today we are on part three. I'd like you to please share this video. Share the video, copy the link and send to somebody. Somebody's really, really going to be blessed by what the Lord has for us tonight. Somebody's going to be blessed. So please copy the link, share the video, just share it far and wide. Let's have some more music still on Brighter Day by Busayo Mi Ilire Oba. Glory to Jesus. I'm waiting for you to share the video and let us all come together because God has something to say. Hallelujah. Regardless of what the seasons of life are, God is walking with you every day. Just lift up your eyes and see the Son of God, and you will not be drowned in the storm. Glory be to God. All right, um, I'd like us to pray. I'd like us to pray. There are no questions tonight. So, um, And besides, uh, we have a voluminous... Um, our series, this series is very, very... Um, it's wide, it's broad, and so just trust the Holy Spirit to help us to pick areas that will be a blessing and that will shed light on our path. I'd like us to pray before we go on. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we appreciate you for this time. We thank you because your word is true. We thank you because your word is light. We give you all the glory because your word is not scarce to us. Father, we say thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we trust you. We ask that you shine your light upon our path. 
Shine your light into our homes, O God. Shine your light into our marriages, O God. Lord, set us free by the truth you now bring us as a result of this light. Let every home, every home be blessed. Every home connected to this podcast, to this broadcast, let them be blessed tonight in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Lord Jesus. We enter into your presence. We enter your throne room by the precious blood of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Okay, we are still on sex, sanctity, and your sanity. And then we are on part three. But quickly, I'll, I'm going to give a very brief, I'm going to give a brief recap of what we learned in part one, what the Holy Spirit taught us in part one and in part two. Okay, so in part one, I'll just give the recap briefly so that we can just go for the benefit of those that have not watched um part one and two and um, for your information i like to tell you that um every series of this teaching after now you can just go on youtube you find them on my page and please subscribe to my page beside me Oba. you find a lot of content there that'll be a blessing to your life god bless you okay so in part one we established that god created sex for pleasure and god created sex first for pleasure in marriage and we also established in part one that sex can be abused. Anything God created can be abused, in, including sex. So um, when purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. So what is the purpose of sex? God created sex so that we can enjoy it in marriage. So if you use sex in any other way, that means you have abused it. You are abusing the purpose. Hallelujah. So sex outside marriage is abused. Sex before marriage is abused. So we also said in part one that God created sex between a husband and a wife, a male and a female. Any sex between um, same sex is an abomination to God and perversion of the mind and soul. So if anybody is if you are having sex with a man, you are, a man having sex with a man, a woman having sex with a woman, that is not the original way of God. That is just perversion. Whoever is doing that is suffering from disorientation. That means you have actually believed some false information and you have allowed it to become your reality and your truth, but it is a lie. So you need to change that orientation and go back to the way God wanted it initially. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we've said why God created sex. He created it for pleasure in marriage okay so and we also said in part one that it is not god's will that it's not only god's will that you should have sex in your marriage but it is god's will that you enjoy the sex in terms of quality and frequency in terms of quality and frequency we also established that there's a difference between having sex and making love Okay, having sex is when you, you, when you concentrate on get, giving yourself sexual pleasure alone. When you concentrate on getting pleasure alone. But when you are making love, it's a shared experience. You want to give pleasure to the other person, to your spouse as well. Praise the Lord. And we also said that when you are married, your body no longer belongs to you. Your life no longer belongs to you. You share your life with your spouse. You share your bodies with your spouse and then we also spoke about communication we're going to look at more of that in part three of of this and, and then in part two let me give a recap of part two too okay so in part two we said that um before you enjoy sex in marriage before you can cleave as one body before you are able to cleave in marriage you must first of all leave the Bible says that a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and both of them will become one flesh. Cleaving, leaving your father and your mother does not only refer to leaving your, your biological family to cleave to your spouse. It also means that leaving everything, every sexual experience and escapade you might have had before you got married to your spouse. Living every fantasy, whether realistic or unrealistic, every pornography, every sexual experience, whether in the ideal or in the reality, whether felt, experienced, or watched, every sexual experience, whether negative or possibly positive, including rape, if you don't detach from all of those pre-marriage sexual experiences, you cannot cleave properly to your spouse in marriage. So that was the core of what we looked at in part two. 
So in part two, before cleaving can occur, there must be a process of living. Living psychologically. Living spiritually. When I say living spiritually, I mean breaking, um, intentionally breaking every soul tie. Because every sexual experience you have leaves you with a soul tie. You have given a part of yourself to the other person and you have taken a part of the other person into yourself. So for every sexual, primary sexual experience you have had, you will have ties with all of those people. And until you live spiritually and psychologically and mentally, you cannot enjoy sex with your spouse. You will continue to make comparison because your spouse is not your ex-boyfriend. Your spouse is not your ex-girlfriend. And for, also for those who are in second marriages, maybe you were widowed or unfortunately divorced. If you don't live body, soul, and spirit, your first marriage, your first sexual partner, you cannot cleave effectively to your spouse in holy matrimony and in very good quality and quantity of sex. Praise the Lord. So today, let's just build on that foundation that we have. I don't know if we'll be able to exhaust this series tonight. Like I said, it's very wide. And when you talk about sex, it's, it's very wide. There's a lot of angles with, and there's, there's a lot, there's a lot to deal with. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to learn. There's a lot to know, most especially in marriage. So we're going to be building on that foundation tonight. And tonight we are going to be focusing on a very particular topic that has, that is causing a lot of issues in marriages that has broken a lot of homes, you know, and also it has to do with sex that has caused a lot of friction and a lot of issues in marriages. And that issue is infidelity, infidelity, infidelity. So what are, if you know other synonyms of infidelity, I'd like you to just put them in the chat box. Let me just know that you are here. Say something, say hi. So infidelity, another synonym is also known as adultery. What is popularly known as cheating? In fact, as far as I'm concerned, that word cheating is an, is an euphemism. It's like they're they are trying to water down the weight of that word. Infidelity, cheating, adultery in marriage. So what exactly is infidelity? What exactly is adultery in marriage? It's a situation where a married person has sex with somebody or indulges don't forget that i said in part one that sex does not only have to do with penetration alone sex is beyond just penetration every activity every sexual activity including foreplay deep kissing heavy petting stroking fondling fingering whatever even text sexting, sexting, having phone sex, everything is still sex. Whether you penetrate or you don't, you don't have to wait until you penetrate before you say you are indulging in sexual activity. Whatever brings sexual pleasure to the body and the mind, you have indulged in sex. Praise the Lord. So infidelity is a situation where a married person has sex or indulges in any sexual activity with someone who is not his or her spouse. If you indulge in any form of sexual activity, including ordinarily, deliber ordinarily deliberately tapping current, you know what I mean by tapping current, when you, when you unnecessary deliberate body contact for the purpose of sexual pleasure or sexting, you know what sexting is? You know, using sex, deep, deeply sexual language while chatting. Sexting or foreplay or pen, it's the, the penetration of a penis to a vagina itself. Everything is still sex. So when you indulge in any of these activities with somebody who is not your husband or your wife, you are said to be, you are, you are said to have indulged in infidelity which the Bible calls adultery. And then there's, I went, I went online because, you know, there's a lot of, if you go everywhere, and they are almost, you know, it's, it's almost becoming a norm in the world. And subtly is creeping into the lives and the homes of a lot of Christians in a very subtle manner. So I went online and I did a bit of research, and I was able to pull out the following data, that recent statistics on infidelity says that 
40% of marriages have seen at least one incidence of infidelity. Remember that I said that it is not until you penetrate, you put, you, you have penetration as a physical coitus that you have indulged in sex. Any sexual activity at all with somebody, either of the mind or of the body, either with or without penetration with anybody that is not your spouse is infidelity, is adultery. It's not until you climb on top of the person, the person climb on top of you in bed. All those little, little acts, and that person is that brings sexual pleasure, and that person is not your spouse, is an act of infidelity or adultery. And so what does the Bible have to say about adultery? The Bible says in Hebrews 13, verse 4 to 5, Hebrews 13, 4 to 5, it says, marriage is honorable in all. That means God himself respects marriage. God himself, God said it. The Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God to men. The Bible says by inspiration of God that marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. The bed there talks about the sex in the marriage. It must be undefiled. It must be pure. It must be clean. It must be without offense. Sexuality, your, the bed being undefiled is beyond having sex with somebody outside. The bed must be undefiled. The bed must be sweet. The bed must be rosy. The bed must be growing. The bed must be without offense. The bed must not be on holiday. The bed must not be under suspension. The bed must constantly be working. And the bed undefiled. The bed there has to do with the sexual life, the sex life of a couple. The Bible now further goes on to say, it says, warmongers and adulterers, God will judge. So the Bible is making us to understand that God will judge adulterers. It is beyond cheating, che cheating on your spouse. That word cheating, I don't even like to use it. The word is called adultery. And God is big on adultery. Because when you sleep with somebody that is not your spouse, you have not only sinned against God. You have sinned against yourself. You have sinned against your body. You have sinned against your spouse. And you have opened the door to demonic attacks for your children. Because the Bible says, whosoever breaketh the edge, the serpent will bite. Your union with your spouse is like a spiritual gate. You and your spouse are like spiritual gatekeepers in the life of your children. If God has blessed you with children. And so when you break the edge, when you break your marriage covenant by indulging in sexual activity with anybody that is not your spouse, you are opening the door of your marriage to devourer. A lot of people, they don't know why so many things are, you know, it is just beyond catching diseases or your home, you know. A lot of people don't know why certain things are happening in their lives. You cannot be sleeping with another person and expect the blessings of God to rest upon your business. You are breaking an edge. You are defiling your life. So that is the stand of God on adultery. The Bible says, warmongers and adulterers, God will judge. And the judgment of God is not beans, it's not yam. David said, it is better, you know, it is, it is, you know, it, it is not, a, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Almighty. So that is the stand of the Bible on adultery, on infidelity. Now, what are the, because despite this fact, despite the fact that people know that infidelity is wrong, infidelity is not good, God frowns as adultery, many people are still indulging in it, many people still find themselves in it, many people would have done it before they know, that means there are some things that can cause adultery. A lot of people that they, can never, they, they never thought of it, they never planned it, that they were going to commit adultery in their lives, or they are going to sleep with another person that is not their spouse in their lives. They find themselves neck deep in this. Is somebody, is, is what I'm saying resonating in somebody's mind? You don't want to do it. You never thought of it, but something pushed you to sleep with another person that is not your wife, that is not your husband. So we want to look at some of the causes of adultery or infidelity. What can make a man think of sleeping with another woman? What can make a woman think of sleeping with another man that is not her husband or that is not his wife? Number one, I'm there are many, there are many causes, but I'm gonna start with this. 
no sex or no sex in marriage. How many of us have heard of a sexless marriage? There are some marriages that they, in that marriage, they have sex only quarterly, three times in a year. That is when, and it's not as if the spouses are living separately or they walk in various continents of the world. They live in the same house, they sleep on the same bed, they everything, but the marriage lacks sex. Low or no sex in a marriage. Many men and women would never have thought or considered sleeping with another person, but they find themselves doing so because they are constantly deprived of sex constantly deprived of sex in their marriages so no sex or low sex in a marriage a sexless marriage can lead to adultery a sexless marriage a marriage where you know there is no sex both of you are just living in the house like brother and sister you only have sex once in a blue moon once in a blue moon when that happens there is emotional disconnect and then your body, you are a human being. Your body begins to crave for it, especially if you are a woman and it's time you are ovulating. That's why you begin to see all different kinds of men at your workplace. That's why you begin to see all different kinds of women. And because your sex is not full at home, you are sexually starved. You are sexually unfulfilled. You are very, very vulnerable and prone to the sin of adultery or to having sex outside your marriage. Imagine somebody who has not eaten. There is no food. The person is constantly hungry. He's being deprived of food day and night. The person has not eaten and is not fasting. The person A couple be in a house or sleeping on the same bed and they don't even have interest in touching one another or one person wants to have sex and the other person is saying no i'm not doing every day constantly it's one excuse or the other i'm tired i'm having a headache i have a lot of work to do i have a lot of things to think of blah 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 blah, blah. you know constantly being deprived what could be the causes of this particular you know issue or condition number one I, I by the help and the inspiration of the holy spirit i was able to list out a few things that could be the cause of a sexless marriage a marriage where there is little or no sex so what are some of the causes of a sexless marriage number one emotional disconnection emotional disconnection when a couple are emotionally disconnected from one another how can they be interested? Even if they make, even if they sleep with each other, they won't be making love. They'll just be having sex just for, for obligation's sake. Wait, mm, just do it and let, just do what you want to do and go. That's the way it's going to be. When there is emotional disconnect between couples, they cannot bond sexually. And what are the things that cause emotional disconnection? Character. Character. When you are abusive towards your spouse, your spouse will not feel horny towards you. If you are the kind of woman that you disrespect your husband, you always pull him down, you know, you always, you, you, you don't, you are not good to him. You don't have good relational skills to your spouse. There will not be any form of sexual attraction. A man's penis can never harden towards a woman that constantly puts him down, insults him and disrespects him. A woman will never feel honey or wet towards a man that constantly abuses her verbally and abuses her, you know, physically or abuses her parents, abuses her family, or you don't provide for her, you don't care about her. So when we don't relate well to one another, when a husband and a wife are not pleasing one another in terms of character, there's going to be emotional disconnect. You can't be annoying me every day. You annoy me today. You know, there is a saying that says, if you want to have sex with a man or a woman by 9 p.m., you have to start from 9 a.m. in the morning. So character also plays a, a, a very, very vital role in quality and good sex between couples. You can't be beating me and expect that I'll be honey towards you. It's not possible. 
You don't do what you're supposed to do. You make me angry. You hurt my feelings all the time. I can't be honey. If I see you, I can't be honey. And if I'm a man, my penis can never harden towards you. But rather, my penis will harden towards other people outside that respect me. So it is a question of emotional disconnect. When there is emotional disconnect between couples, their sex life cannot be healthy. Also, unattractiveness. You know, this is a big one, especially for us Christians. We tend to take a lot of things granted, for granted, most especially when it comes to our appearance and personal body grooming. Once we are married, most women, they just leave themselves. Most, especially men. Some men, just, they just let themselves go. A man will not shave. If your wife is the person that likes beard, they will not groom their beards. They will be cutting haircuts that make them look like old men. You know, when you are physically unattractive to your spouse, it can cause a sexless marriage. Because human beings, are men are attracted by what they see. When they see something good, they are attracted and they are aroused. Women are also attracted when you smell good and when you look good. Praise the Lord. The way we smell, the way we look, the way we keep our body fit, some of us just eat anyhow and we become so fat. Even some men, their stomachs are so big that when they come on top of their wives, the wife cannot wait to have them away. Because they have become so weighty, they've left, let themselves go, they no longer pay attention to how they look. There are some, you know, the, you, you need to know what your spouse wants. You need to know what your spouse likes. If your spouse is the kind of woman that she likes men wearing pencil jeans and men... Look, forget all this religious stuff. You are not going to get married to your mommy, Gio. And you are not going to marry your daddy, Gio. Your pastor is not going to come and sleep with you. Your, your mommy pastor is not going to come and sleep with you. Forget all those things. They say, eh, we must tie our head. We must not wear makeup. Look, face reality. Don't send your spouse. Don't send your husband or your wife to the arms of another woman because of religion. It's Jesus you accepted. It's not religion you accepted. You accepted Jesus, you didn't accept religion. All these ones that some women, they will carry the same hair. Carry the same hair for three months, four months, the hair will be smelling. The hair will be smelling. Everybody must know that you grow, you are old. Why would you leave gray hair on your head so that everybody can respect you? You don't need it. You need to groom yourself. As a woman, you need to look good, look sweet and sexy. There are some women... Especially female ministers, you can't go near them, you can't hug them. They are oozing. If you don't, you, it's not compulsory that it's not only uh, expensive designer perfumes that are good. You can also see perfumes. There are plenty, a lot of body spray in the market that will make you smell good. That will make you smell nice. Don't push your husband out because of the way you are looking. It is Jesus you accepted, not religion. Jesus did not tell you not to look good. It's religion that tells you that you should not look good and look like an old witch. Praise the Lord. A lot of women, especially with Christians, that's the way we look. And even the men, you don't need to look like an old man. No, there's no point. Your wife is a human being. The same way men are being tempted and attracted to women outside. Women too are being tempted. Women too have tendency to commit and to fall into adultery because they are human beings. They have eyes and they have feelings. So we need to up our game. Even your environment must be clean. How can your bedroom be smelling of wee-wee? Your bedroom be smelling and you, you, and you want... Oh, no, 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 no. There, there are just some things that, you know, there are some things that will not... We, we need to really work on. We need to up our game. The Bible says that the devil is moving about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. All those girls that, want, that are interested in your husband, they, they, they want to look good. They don't mind. They, they, they don't mind. They will do anything to keep fit. What about you? Why would you let yourself go? There are men that are interested in your wife. Your wife goes out every day. Men see her. She sees men. Why would you let yourself go? Why would you wear one boxer for one week? Why would you wear clothes that are bigger than you? Why, as a man, why would you not be smart and smell good? Some men, if they remove their socks, you will run away. There are so many creams and powders that you can use to groom yourself as a man. As a man, your armpits should not be smelling. 
you should shave and use deodorants and perfumes and wear smart clothing. Wear smart clothing. Even there are some of our pastors, for example, Pastor Ia Deboe, that the Jew at 80, the man is still looking yuppie. The man is still looking good. Forget all those things. Forget all those religions. Look, let's face reality. Marriages are suffering. Marriages are being broken every day. Men and women go out every day and they face sexual temptations every day. So we must intentionally package ourselves to be sexually attractive to our wives, to be sexually attractive to our husbands. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Another cause of a sexless marriage or a marriage with little or no sex is when the spouses do not know how to pleasure each other in bed. For crying out loud, you can't just come into a woman and just bang, gri, 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 and you stand up and go. No, you haven't done anything. You do, oh, what you did is you had sex. You didn't make love. There's a difference between having sex and making love. You need to, we need to up our game. Even as women, you don't just lie down there, lie down there like a log of wood, like a dead fish, and just allow the man to be pounding away and doing all the work. No, that is not the will of God. You need to study the book of Songs of Solomon. God is very, very interested in our sexuality as married people. Our, our marriage is our garden of Eden. It's our garden of Eden and we must enjoy it because there's no sex in heaven. And apart from that, when you are, your marriage sex is not sweet, it's not enjoyable, you are liable to, we are all human beings. You, are, you know, some, when, some people, when I was single, yeah, I was thinking that it was only singles that face temptations. When I was single, I used to feel that uh, it's only because I'm single, I'm not married, that's why I'm facing sexual temptations. But after I got married, I also knew that both married people and single people face sexual temptations. And everybody will face sexual temptations till Jesus comes. Even if you are 80, even if you are 100, you will continue to face it. That is why we must be real with ourselves and make sure that we are, we, we are satisfied at home. We must make sure that we up our game in terms of our sexuality. We must know how to pleasure one another. As a man, you must know all the G-spots, the erogenous zone in the body of your wife. And it comes by communication. It was in the past that people feel shy. In fact, when they, have, when they make love. But these days, you open your mouth and talk. You got to enjoy it, man. You got to enjoy it. You got to tell him, touch my ass, squeeze my breast, suck my nipples. You need to open up. You need to talk. You need to know how to pleasure your husband. You need to make your every sexual experience heaven on earth. You must learn. There are various spots in order. It's not only the breast and the bum bum. It's not only the, 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 the penis and the balls that give pleasure. Right from the crown of your the sole of your feet, you can, you, you can be tickled. You can, if, if, in fact, without penetration, you can come. As a woman, as a man, without penetration, you can reach orgasm. It's just a matter of exploring one another, spending quality time with one another. And if you know that there is no how you can teach one another, there are Christian materials that you can study. That you can read. Pornography is a no-no. Please, don't allow the devil to deceive you. Pornography will not teach you anything. It will only open your house to demons. It will only open your marriage because they do a lot of unrealistic and sins. And the people that are acting the pornography, it is demons that are possessing them. And many of them are under the influence of drugs, Viagra and all of those things. So don't even go there. There are so many Christian materials that you can read. There are materials written by, um, by um, 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 Ayoaki Bade. So many of them just go online, Christian materials on how to enhance my marriage sex life. You will see it there. You will see it there. Praise the Lord. So we must learn how to pleasure one another. Another thing that can cause a sexless marriage or little or no sex in marriage is stress. When we get carried away with work. You know, sometimes, you know, when I was single, I used to think that, ah, by the time we get married, ah, because... I made up my mind, myself and my husband, you know, we're children of God. I made up my mind that no, no sex before marriage, 
no sexual activity, no foreplay before marriage. But thank God our courtship was not long. That is why for singles, I would not encourage you to do unnecessarily long courtship because you are just putting yourself under unnecessary pressure to fall into the sin of fornication. And so that time I used to think that, ah, by the time we get married, every day we'll be making love, every day. But by the time I got inside, and I had to go to work in the morning. My husband had to go to work. And pregnancy came. Children started coming. There was no house help, housework, and everything. I said, ah, this thing is not the way I thought it was. So all we had to consciously sit down and create time, quality time to explore one another so that our sexual lives do not, does not suffer. So, you know, the Bible says that in this life, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Do not allow stress, lack, or childlessness. Or you're still waiting for a child, waiting for the fruit of the womb. And you don't want your save, okay, because of that. So you allow your problems to overwhelm you. You will not create time for sex. No, you have to create it. Because that is the reason why you married in the first place. The, major, the first reason, reason number one, why you married, why you married is so that you will not commit fornication apart from you enhancing the purpose of God on it. So that the Bible says, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. So you must make time for that. Nothing must rob you of your sex. Nothing must rob you of quality, sweet sex in your marriage. Praise the Lord. So you must consciously create the time. If possible, if it works for you, create a timetable. Oh, we'll be having sex Sunday evening, Wednesday and Friday. It has worked for a lot of couples. There, you know, I have a friend, a very beautiful friend of mine, born a child of God. Her husband, there was a time her husband was working in Abuja. And so the husband would fly home twice a month. Not because he had the money, but because he knew that his marriage sex was important. He would fly home from Abuja and fly back twice a month. Sometimes he would just come a few hours because of work and he would go. And she would, ah, my husband came on, he just came home just to sleep with me. I said, oh, wow, fantastic, beautiful. So, you know, we need to consciously create time, spend money. If you know that the house where you are is not conducive for your sex, it is important. You will never know the value of something until you lose it. May we not lose it in the name of Jesus. God forbid you fall into the sin of adultery. You will now know, you will know that it is better to guard your marriage, to guard your sexuality in your marriage, than for you to be starved and go and commit adultery. If your home is not convenient, take the weekend off. Gather money. You know, take the weekend off. Go and lodge in a very nice place. Or you send the children to the grandmother. Or everybody living with you, tell them to give you, you know, a few days off. You want to sort out some things. And enjoy yourselves. Explore yourselves. Create, spend quality time with one another. Another thing that can affect quality sex in marriage is health issues. Some men have very low sex drive, not because they don't want to do, but because their libido is very low. You know, those are health issues. And it can come, it, you know, it, there are lots of things that can cause it. It might be hereditary. It might be as a result of their diet. And it might be hormonal. Maybe as some men advance in age, their sex drive begins to drop. Maybe as some women advance in age, their sex drive begins to drop. So if your sex drive is low, you can actually consult a medical practitioner or a dietitian or a dietitian. Most of the time it has to do with what we eat. If you eat the right foods, you will gain good balance sexually. You eat, there are so many good foods. Go online and you, you could just search for foods that could boost libido. For example, I read somewhere that water leaf is very good. I read that ugu, ugu vegetable is very good. I read somewhere that if you can do away with sugar, for men, if men can do away with sugar, even women, when you do away with sugar, you become more wet. You find it easier to get honey, and your pussy gets wet. Because if you are not wet, you cannot climax as a woman. If you are not wet, you cannot enjoy it. You will not, you will not have orgasm if you are not, you have to be wet before penetration comes. If you are not wet, number one, you can get wounded in the, in the process of the, 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 the penis penetrating your vulva. You can get injured. Anything can happen, and you will not even enjoy it. You will not reach your orgasm. 
And you know, let me tell you, some people think once they climax once, that's the end. From research, I got to know that there are levels of orgasm. There is an orgasm that happens in the outer part of the vagina. That is when the clitoris is stimulated. There is another orgasm that happens inside. There is another orgasm that happens deep, deep inside. You know, just like the Bible, biblical, um, um, biblical example of the, the, the tabernacle that has the outer court, the inner court, and the only of all is a lot of women, a lot of men, we are still experiencing outer court pleasure. You have not even known anything at all. And Jesus will soon come. And there's no marriage in heaven. So why don't you work hard on your marriage now? Enjoy it. There are levels of climax. There are, there are some orgasm you get to that. Your, your eyeball will roll. And your body will be gyrating and vibrating. You are gone. You are limp. That is what we're talking about. That it will, in fact, for the next one week, you will feel it in your body that you made love. Nobody can even come in front of you. You will not even see another person. Because you are enjoying what you have done. And you still feel it. Praise the Lord. So if you are having health issues and your libido is low, see a medical practitioner or see a dietitian on foods you can eat to boost your libido, both male and female. I learned that there are, I learned that there are some fruits that are very good for women, especially gorontula. There is this um, fruit that is grown in the northern part of the country. It's called gorontula fruit. If you can lay your hands on it, I have not used it. I, I, I don't need it because I eat banana, orange, watermelon, just because I want to quickly be getting wet. Before my husband touches me, I want to be lubricated because I want to enjoy myself. And I also want him to, to enjoy me. So there are so many things. And I also, if you can do away with sugar, then um, you got, you unsweetened original you got, too, is good for women. And then clothes, all these things, I read them. You know these clothes, these small, small clothes that we normally use to make zobo or some other tea. If you can wash it well, soak it in water, and then after soaking it for some days, you can use it to wash up. You know, it just disinfects the place. It cleanses the place, and it gives it a very good smell. Some of you will say, my husband cannot give me a head. My husband has never given me a head before. My husband has never given me a, can you know, what's that thing? Is it head boot? I can't even remember what they are calling it. Like as, as, in, as in using the tongue to caress the vagina. And he has one name, I forgot it. I don't know why he's not coming. You will complain that your husband will never give you a head. Yes, the place is smelling. How do you want him to give you a head? The place is not smelling sweet. So the place has to be clean. The place has to smell well. The place has to smell. If you want your husband to give you a head, the place has to smell well. He has the smell has to attract him to come there and lick it up. Yes, I don't know that some people, you know, some people have a lot of controversial issues on oral sex and all of that. It depends. It depends. Is Jesus you accepted? Not religion. It depends on what your spouse wants. It depends on what your spouse wants. It depends on how you want to enjoy yourselves in your marriage. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Another reason for another cause of a sexless marriage could also be satanic attack. If you have done everything, you're dressing well, you're smelling good, you are well groomed, your house is clean, you are attractive, you look sexy, you want to perform well in bed, you wear nice lingerie, not that you dress like an Eskimo. You dress like an Eskimo, you tie scarf in the house, or as a man, you dress like an Eskimo, you tie belt and jeans when you are with your wife. When you have done all that, you have fulfilled all righteousness, yet you still feel that your sexuality or your sex life is under attack, that you are not, you know, attracted to one another. Having done all, it could also be a satanic attack. So in that case, you pray. In that case, you pray. The Bible says, is any afflicted, let him pray. Other causes of infidelity, apart from a sexless marriage, other causes of infidelity is also indiscipline. When a woman is not disciplined, when a man is not disciplined, you are a married man, you are a married woman, you play carelessly with other men and other women in your office. They don't, you just wear ring for decoration. You are so indisciplined. It can also lead you to infidelity. You must always remind yourself of who you are. First, you are first a child of God. Secondly, you are a family man, you are a family woman. You cannot relate with other people of the opposite sex the way others do. So indiscipline too can cause infidelity in marriage. Also, lose boundaries. Now, this one, apart from a sexless marriage, 
or issues with sex in marriage, when your boundaries are loose, you don't know how to set boundaries, you are going to find yourself in the arms and in the bed of another man and another woman. If you cannot set boundaries, correct strict boundaries in relating with the opposite sex, friends and colleagues. A lot of people, you don't know what time to stop chatting. Married man, married woman, you are still chatting with your colleague and your friends, church members, sisters, you are still cancelling 10 p.m., 9 p.m., late in the night. And then the discussion is beginning to pass another level. You know, there's a way you can be professional with people. And then the discussion is beginning to pass another level. Before you know it, um, 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 you begin to bond. Communication, more and more communication leads to more and more bonding. You begin to bond with another person. Even, don't you know that you don't just find yourself in bed with another person. It starts with emotional connection. There's something called emotional infidelity. When you are, in, you are so emotionally connected and emotionally bonded with another person that is not your spouse, you begin to desire sex with them. You begin to imagine, we are all human beings. Let's stop fooling ourselves up and down. We are, all, we are first human beings before Christians. And these things happen both to men and to women. We must learn to set strict boundaries. I'm not saying you should go about, you know, being too rigid and everything with everybody. Of course, you have colleagues, you have friends, you have business partners. But, you know, we must know when to draw the lines. We must know when to draw the lines. Praise the Lord. It is also not good. Don't avoid discussing your marital frustrations with people of the opposite sex. It will lead to bonding and it can lead to extramarital affair. If you have marital frustrations, look for a mature Christian of the same sex with you. If you are a man and you have marital frustrations, discuss your marital frustrations with a mature man, a father figure who is wise, so not the one that will give you bad counsel. You don't need to go to another woman to discuss your marital frustrations. As a woman, don't discuss your marital frustrations with another man. Whether he's an old man or he's a young man, a man is a man, he has a dick, he has a feeling, he has a heart. So, as children of God, we must learn to draw the lines. We must learn to know when to draw the lines. We must learn to have, you know, strict boundaries. We must learn, our boundaries should not be loose. And if there is anyone you feel attracted to, let's be sincere with ourselves. We are all human beings. It's not only... In fact, after you get married, there are, there's a tendency that you still feel attracted to many more people. Except you are not a human being, except you don't go out. If you don't go out, they will come inside to meet you. You see them on social media. We also get attracted to other people. But if you find out that you are becoming attracted to another person of the opposite sex, please withdraw. Avoid being unnecessary, avoid any unnecessary contact, unnecessary phone calls, unnecessary chatting, unnecessary visits with somebody that you already know in your mind that you are attracted to, that is not your wife, that is not your husband. You don't need all those kind of communication. Gradually withdraw until those feelings go away. And if the feelings don't go away, please withdraw. Withdraw. The Bible says, flee all appearance of evil. And also, never ever be alone with a member of the opposite sex who you feel attracted to. Don't, don't try it. In a car, in a house. You can't trust yourself. You don't trust yourself. Only trust God on your behalf. The Bible says, I still read the book of Romans today. It says that the things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing them. The ones I want to do, I don't do. So, save yourself. Save yourself. Don't say, ah, I'm a spiritual man. I'm a kokoro koko. -ko -ko. No. The Bible says, how are the mighty falling? Those people that fell into the sin of adultery and fornication, many of them never thought of it. Many of them never planned it. It just happened gradually, gradually, gradually. One day, one day, they saw themselves, they met themselves alone with somebody they are very, very physically attracted to that is not their spouse. And boom, it just happened. So, a stitch in time saves nine. If you discover that you are sexually or physically attracted to somebody that is not your spouse, please keep off. It's not the time to bind the devil. It's not the time to do personal Bible study together. Or those people that maybe though you are working on the island, you two is working on the island, you move together, you drive together. The moment you begin to discover you are having a crush over him or he's having a crush over you, please find another way. God is a provider. If God sees that you're continually, continually being with this person can put you in trouble, God will create another way and provide for you in another way. 
I think we've said a lot tonight. We've said so, so much. The Lord will help us. Now, everybody, in conclusion, everybody, what I say, everybody, including everybody you respect, have a tendency or is vulnerable to commit adultery. Because we are all human beings. We are flesh and blood. But when we trust in God, we trust in the power of the Holy Spirit, we fill our minds with the word of God and we take necessary precautions. We will not fall into that trap. The Bible says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. How do you walk in the spirit? You make sure that your sexual life with your spouse is alive. Number one. Number two, be prayerful. Number three, make sure the word of the Lord is in your heart. The Bible says, how can a man cleanse his ways except the word of the Lord? It says, your word have I hidden in my heart so that I don't sin against you. Number three, flee. Flee. Avoid unnecessary closeness with members of the opposite sex, especially people you know that you have a tendency to be attracted to. Keep the relationship or the communication as professional as possible. And if you discover that you are falling deep in lust with them, withdraw, flee, and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I think we should pray because the Bible says that except the Lord builds the house, they that labor, labor in vain. There's nothing we can do. Our sufficiency is of God. We trust the Lord to revive our sexuality in our marriages. We trust the Lord to bring the spice back into our homes. We trust the Lord to bring the emotional connection back between us and our spouses. We trust the Lord to give us the, 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 the interest and the zeal for us to groom ourselves and look physically attractive to our spouses. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. I'd like us to pray. Just talk to God. Appreciate him for your marriage. Appreciate him for your home. Thank him for your life. Thank him for the word of the Lord that has come to you tonight. Father, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, I speak Matiliana Kaili Makuri Masupra in Dalia. In Daka Bali Mosonto, Ida Diani Andi Kaadia Mahuri Kasende. In those days when the wine was exhausted in the wedding, Jesus said to the servant, He said, Fill the bucket, fill the pot with water. And the Bible says, He said, Put your cup inside. And when they tasted it, the wine was fresh. I decree in the name of Jesus, every water that you need to fill your pots with in your marriage, the Lord will open your eyes to see them in the name of Jesus. Your marital wine will be sweeter than before. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace into every turbulent home, every home under demonic attack, under demonic oppression. I speak the word of the Lord. I command you, lose in the name of Jesus. Every satanic power, all the marriages hostage, I bind you and I disarm you in the name of Jesus. I release the blood of Jesus into every marriage and into every home. And I decree that we shall all testify in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. We have come to the end of this series, Sex, Sanctity, and Your Sanity. If you have missed out on part one, part two, you can always catch up with it right here on Facebook and on YouTube. I want to say a very big thank you to everyone that has joined us tonight. I can't see any comments, but I can see Omolara Christana. I can see marriage as God intends. Pastor Shei Grushabi, I can see you. I can see some other people. If you can just give me a like or a comment so that I can know you are here. Thank you for joining. I really appreciate your coming tonight. God bless you. So till we come, till I come your way again next week so we're starting another series let me just keep you in suspense you you'll see the advert on your screen very soon another series will be starting next week thursday by the grace of god if jesus tarries if jesus tarries because jesus is coming very soon so we need to be ready for him so god bless you good night and sweet dreams let's have some more music some more music hallelujah hallelujah open your heart We've been there joy for a night. I see a rainbow in the sky.
Come on, somebody. Yeah. So your sign will be a smile. Let's join the moment.